Lounging Sun. All right, welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan, back with me again. Got my boy Mario. And continuing to talk Image Comics for its 30th anniversary. And this time, we are talking about a book that we both read for the first time, Astro City. The new collection just came out uh, two weeks ago as of when we're recording this. And it collects the first six issues of Volume 1, first 12 of the second volume, yep. and the half issue put, put out by uh, Wizard Wizards. Magazine. Yeah. Um, so I, I think we both... We were talking about this at the shop when you came in, or maybe we were talking about it last time we recorded. Like, we both had discussed how we had wanted to ch check this out, but just for whatever reason, never yeah. got into it, you know. And it, and I didn't even realize that it started in '95, so yeah, it was pretty, er, it was pretty early on yeah. in image in image comics. I mean, image was only around for like three years, and then on top of it, constant with yeah. winning awards. For like three years straight, best continuing series, best cover artist, best single issue story, best writer, all this stuff for such a long time. And it's and, still uh, coming out. Yeah. And it's and now that it's back in image, it's, you know, it's continuing. Um, I you know, went over because it was a part of um, part of homage studios, which was wild, which was a sub imprint of Wildstorm. So it moved over to DC yeah. when uh, Jim Lee sold Wild. <clears throat> Wildstorm to them and uh it has a pretty significant run but yeah. like by the time i was super into like paying attention to like comic books and like researching stuff this book had been out for at least yeah, for long three time. four years you know like i was definitely not where, and where do you jump in like i didn't know where to fucking jump in i didn't even know i how, well, i haven't heard anybody talk about it like it, it's a all. thing that i've heard mentioned and i've known and existed for a long time but I've never actually met anybody that talks about it. So I didn't even know what it was about. I had zero idea. And I got the first issue, you know how Comixology will do like these random sales. I think they had the first issue either for free or for like a dollar or something. Mm -hmm. And I read that. And I thought it was just about him. Because it's the Samaritan. Right, yeah. I, thought, I literally I thought was, was like, about. oh, I thought the whole book is just, it's like this fake Superman in, you know, this version of Metropolis and this version of DC. And it's about him. Okay, cool. It's a DC facsimile, and not not knowing anything else. And then I, I started reading. I was like, "Oh, I was completely wrong." Oh, that's I know. Not, I mean, I this is at all nothing like what I was expecting, and I had no preconceived notions of what this book was whatsoever. Yeah. I didn't like fucking really research into it. I just always heard it talked about, sort of, but I never during, like, I've never heard anyone talk about it in detail. No, I, I when I say I heard people talk about it, it wasn't like not in shops. It was. In Mag and like it's Wizard Magazine, you know yeah. what I mean? Because I was getting Wizard up until the point where this trade ends. So that's when I started getting Wizard Magazine. So I'd read about it and I'd see the promos for it. Right. I'd see the ads. I'd see it in Diamond Comics and I'd see that it was winning Eisner Awards. But I just never, you know, for whatever reason, I'm, I, I never tried that hard to get into yeah. like volume one. And, you know, I mean, like I'll read the, I mean, Kurt Busiek and Brent Anderson and Alex Ross. Those are the co-creators. Kurt Busiek writes it. It's even called um, Kurt Busiek's Astro City, right? Yeah. I think it's referred to that as often. Well, yeah. I mean, if you look in the table of contents, like that's what it says. <laughs> it says Kurt Busiek's Astro City. Yeah. Even though he, he's not the only creator, but whatever. I And then Alex Ross's covers, you know, like yeah. this dude pumps covers out like nobody's business still. Yeah. He's been doing Captain America for the last like three years. Captain America, Immortal Hulk. He did yeah. the entire run of that. Um, Black Panther he's doing now. And one thing I'll say is that he's, he designs costumes very well, I think. I think he does really good design work. I think that all these, all these costumes, while they don't feel super original, they're good analogs for the type of yeah. Yeah. characters that he's trying to do. Yep. I, I mean, the only one that I think is kind of goofy is Jack in the Box. Right. So I think it's also kind of the <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, I, I that was one of the standout characters to me. Jack in the Box, and um, what's the? It's not Redeemer, is it Redeemer? With the the vampire? Yeah, yeah, uh, he's the confessor or the. It's Alter Boy and <laughs> Alter Boy. I know 
I couldn't get over that fucking Ultra Boy crap. The Confessor, you're right. Yeah, the Confessor. But what I like too is is the city is as much a character as the heroes were following, and we also follow some of like just the regular people yeah. within the city. And it's easy to see why if you if you put yourself back in '95, you can see why this book yeah was so revered. Yeah, and people loved it because yeah, it's so far it was time. so the different. Is, the thing that tripped me out the most is that all of the Marvel events are in here. Yeah, the Registration Act, the Civil War is in there, and then then you find out that the mayor is a secret alien that's been hiding out, secret invasion. That 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 is what I, you know. I for, I forgot that that was one of the talking points I wanted to raise. You. So it feels like like Mark Mark Millar and fucking Bendis. Just took ideas from here. They took ideas from here. Clearly, the, the, the craziest mean, thing to me is that it's clearly an homage to everything that he likes about superheroes. It's like an homage to superheroes in general because you're taking elements from Fantastic Four, the first family. Mm-hmm. Clearly, that's the Fantastic Four. Right. Uh, the Samaritan is clearly Superman. Mm-hmm. You know, the Confessor and Ultra are clearly Batman and Robin. So Ultra you're Boy. taking a lot of elements from both sides, and I think it's just because. he He's really good at doing this kind of respectful homage to why he loves the thing, which is the same way. My, what, probably my favorite Superman book is the one he did, uh, Secret Identity. Oh, it's easily one of the top three best Superman stories. Yeah, answers. and it's an homage to Superman about why he loves it, even though it's not technically Clark Kent, you know, in the way we know him typically. Mm. But it's all about, like, what makes the character the character, regardless if the details aren't the same. And that's kind of what happens here, is that technically none of these car- characters are the right ones, but it's that's not the point. It's 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 an opportunity for him to write all of the characters he likes without having to deal with, you know, the, the, the overlords. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think and it's that... It, that the craziest thing is that it's so fucking good. Like I constantly would read two or three issues and walk away being like, "That's so good," and then I would read another three issues like, "That's so good." Because every I I liked that the beginning was all kind of monster of the week, but it, all of them had a different tone and a different perspective. But all of them were homages to certain books, where this one's about you know one of the fantastic four characters this is the daughter and she's tired. that was such a great that was she wants to be issue. a regular kid and it's like this two-story two issue arc uh and that was really good and then there's one where there's just a family that moved to astro city yeah. and they're like dealing with the craziness that is astro city and at the end the guy's like he sees everybody coming together dealing with the aftermath and coming together as a community and he's like i like this place but all of them are really good like you said it, the city is as much of a character as the characters are and all of them, all the issues and every single issue, even if it even if it just seems like a throwaway story, is is there to inform the tone and texture of the city and the world. Yeah, and, I mean, yeah, I think that for me, like my intro- introduction to Kurt Busiek was when he took over Avengers with George Perez mm-hmm. after Heroes Reborn for the Heroes Return era, that, like when. Yeah. I think that's when uh, Mark Wade comes back to Cap, right? If yeah. I remember correctly. Yeah, and like like ninety eight, with right, Mark Barney. right. And I think that I like that Avengers. I don't. Nobody really talks about that Avengers run. I don't think it's necessarily considered one of the best, but I really dug that Avengers run because I think that was my introduction to reading Avengers. I was mostly mm. DC, and that's the first Avengers that I read. And I've always thought he's a really good writer. Sometimes it does feel very verbose. I'm not saying this one. But his writing sometimes yeah, feels depending very, on the book, yeah. Yeah, depending on the book. Like, especially, like, early Thunderbolts. I was reading that, rereading that not that long ago, and my God, there's a lot of text on those pages. Mm-hmm. And that didn't hold up for me as well as it did when I first read it back in the, in the late 90s. But this book, I've had that same feeling that you said, that you said like, you read a couple of you're like, God damn, that's good. I read, I, I think I read the first, it was either the first, just the first issue or the first two. And I was like, my God, dude, why the fuck did I wait this long to read this? <laughs> yeah, or for me, I was like, why didn't anybody tell me this? Like, I I, I am shocked that this book doesn't get talked about more. And I'm shocked like, it I hasn't been I don't understand. Print. Yeah. It's a crime. Like, it's, this This is, a, this is to similar me, to the conversation we had about Powers, where I, these books were important. And obviously, something like Powers, I think, is also a continuation of this kind of book. Yeah. Because that, that was also clearly about you know, breaking down the superhero world from a different perspective. And then yeah, I think Gotham Central is a continuation of the same kind of thing. Mm-hmm. The big surprise, all those books are amazing. They just, yeah. you know, happen to be very talented people behind them. 
Uh, but I feel like constantly those books don't get as much, much attention because even Gossam Central doesn't get as much attention. It doesn't but at all. This is a criminal. I don't understand why Astro City isn't a book that people talk about all the time because it's this is from the ground up. He creates this entire world and it's as good, if not better, than most superhero books. Yeah. It's to me, insane. to me, this is like the modern comparison. I know you're not a huge fan, but the modern comparison to me would be like the Black Hammer universe by Jeff Lemire, right? The, kind of a similar type of, of thing where you're taking analogs of Marvel right. or DC characters. You have this city that they all live in, right? But to me, and I and I I love Jeff Lemire, but I I dig this a little bit more. Like this to me feels like it was so far above ahead, the rest. Yeah. You know, also a little ahead of its time, but so far above the rest of the pack that was coming out. It's the first book that I've read from 95 from this era of comic books for the first time and enjoyed it as much as I did. I yeah. didn't think I was going to hate it. I didn't think it was going to blow me away. And it did blow me away. I'm like, holy shit, this is, yeah. this is one of the best fucking series that I've read in a long time, yeah. you know? And... It, it does suck that it hasn't been available. And I think that that's why people can't talk about it because it's been out of print for such a long time. Yeah. It's been tied up with, you know, first it's image. Switching companies. Then it's switching DC Wildstorm. Yeah. Now, finally, it's back under the image banner, which I'm so stoked for. Like you were saying, it's it's coming back out again. I think they, the same week that this book one dropped, I think a, the start of a new miniseries. Yep. Right? Yeah, and you, uh, it, was, it was a one-shot, but I think it's supposed to be the first one-shot from many... Yeah, and see, and I wanted to get it, but I'm like, I I, I'm not jumping in like that. <laughs> I have to read. I'm just gonna get the trades, and I cannot fucking wait for the next book. Like, I how I I don't want to say I powered through because that makes it seem like I I kind of rushed, but yeah. I couldn't put this down. I couldn't step away after reading like a couple issues. Yeah, like no, I it just was great, dude. I would read like three or three issues, and then every time I was like, oh my god, that was so good. Yeah. And, and again, like, I, I was like, part of me was expecting, like, fuck her music, it can be wordy sometimes. This wasn't, this did not feel like a chore to read. It didn't feel like I'm getting a wall of text. I think Brent right. Anderson's, coupled with Alex Ross's character designs, Brent Anderson, who it's not necessarily like, to me, I don't consider him like a huge, huge name in comic books, no. but his character work is so good. He captures like, the faces of these characters, the emotions of them, so perfectly, I think. But I think it also it it doesn't feel like nineties. It doesn't. It feels yeah. like a more modernized take on what the style was in like nineteen seventy five or nineteen eighty two. Yeah, it's got more of an older approach, but with more modern tech from the nineties. Instead of doing all the crazy, super muscular Joe Mad or you know exaggerated. Well, and that's and that's what's funny is like we were just we just got finished recording the fucking battle chasers episode and then we go to this which came out three years before it but you would if if you hated both books to somebody yeah didn't tell them when they came out i i mean i guarantee you people would think astro city was newer yeah without a doubt like maybe even like early to mid 2000s I would say maybe not like super I would say modern. Oh two, oh three, like around the you know? powers and stuff but came to, out. Like, I didn't even know it came out in ninety five. I, 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 that's it blew me away. That was one of the main factors of wanting to like check this out. I'm like, it was so different than anything else being yeah. published at Image yep. back then, you know. And I read that Image timeline, and I was like going through it, and that's when I, you know, I'm like looking at all the books when they came out, and I see Ash and like, what. And I couldn't believe it's 95. And then I started seeing wins award, wins award, wins award, wins yeah. for three years straight. Well, it's like, I mean, Powers and Gotham Central <laughs> were the same. Gotham Central kept one. I, I know Powers won a, a lot of awards, which also yeah. I think we talked about in the Powers episode. I didn't realize it. When Gotham Central launched, I think it won an Eisner that year. It's just a shame that we did these, these kind of books that are criminally underrepresented yeah. by the fan base. Nobody talks about them. And we don't get enough books like this. I think that this book, well, we'll see, I guess. We'll see what the yeah, continuation have, neither of Neither of us have read past this. I don't know if it continues to stay as strong or if it 
beacons out and you get to the 2000s i have no idea i mean i would imagine at least if nothing else the next first half of book two will still continue to be really good because it yeah. was still winning awards so i can't see it faltering that much but i don't know where we end up as it continues to be published by dc yeah but i i, I just I wanted more. I put the book down and I just wanted more. And I don't know when fucking book two comes out. I'm going to look it up right now. I have no idea, but man, I, I really liked it. I, <coughs> yeah. And it helped to go in with zero idea. Like I have just started reading. I was like, what the, oh, this is like just a bunch of random story. Like, cool. But I, I, every single one of them was like, this is really good. This is a really good take on enter a character. Yeah. And, and I, I think that, um, what was I going to say that, uh, I would have been totally cool if it was like one off stories with like an overall like overarching arching a narrative right yeah. like but you go like a little Sin bit City. yeah but I I do like where it went like we did get little mini arcs yeah moving into the second volume of the series which is in this book I mean but you know what I mean yeah I'm just I still like talking about oh August August is when. That's when in August. Yeah, yeah, I'll be looking forward to that. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm a I'm, huge fan. I'm now. So I'm like am I, man. It. It's so good. And I mean, he's he's got a lot of really good books. Um, his Conan stuff is really good. That's really solid. Dude, that stuff. that's my favorite Conan. That I I mean, and people probably will kill kill me for that for saying that, but like I didn't. I've tried to go back and read some of the older, you know, Marvel Conan, but that Kurt Busiek and Carrie Nord. Yeah. That oh, was yeah. my that was my shit, dude. I wish Dark Horse still had the Conan license because I feel like Marvel will, will only go so far. Yeah. And and I think I don't know if you and I have talked about it, but I feel like when a Marvel or DC puts out a property that is not really theirs, theirs, they only put so much like creativity into it, and they only put so much like you know i, I think, don't know not money into it but you know what i mean like they yeah. don't i think they try to make but they try to make commercialize it because yeah. they they i don't think they like it being this niche thing which is what you saw with conan they threw a big name in it jason aaron in the beginning and it was that actually run was really good but they also immediately threw him into the marvel universe and savage avengers and all this shit and like i don't know that anybody was really asking for that not that not that savage avengers is like a bad book or that some of that stuff is bad, but it's just that's not what people wanted. Yeah, it's got a long history of being a certain type of book, and I think Jason Aaron did a pretty good job because he's a huge fan of it. But they don't want that; they they want it to be as popular and overreaching as possible. And you know, it sucks because. But you're right. Anytime they grab any book, like look what happened with Angela. Angela, fucking... they grabbed it, didn't know what to do, and they just kind of leave it there and they didn't know what to do with it. And they, there's a lot of characters that they just don't know what to do with. Yeah, they bought up the cross gen books they put out a couple of mini series of that and that died yeah they they're doing the alien books but they only put so much kind of like finance behind it marketing behind it the predator book was supposed to come out that kind of got pushed to the wayside it's finally going to come out almost yeah. a year after it originally was solicited now they got this miracle man thing where they teased in that timeless book i don't want to see miracle man in the marvel universe it just doesn't make sense it's like let it be its own thing that's how, that's how I feel. Let these properties be their own thing. Right. It's I guess it's cool to see Conan in an, on an Avengers team, but I'd much rather just read a Conan story. Nobody wants that. Like, I mean, obviously people want it because they fucking did a whole run of Savage Avengers with Jerry Duggan, and now they're doing another right. Savage Avengers. Yeah, but I, there's a good chance it's gonna die, and then no one's gonna remember any of this stuff. That's true. I mean, but and that's and that's why I feel like Astro City once it. Maybe once it went to Wildstorm, maybe yeah, that's exactly. when it, it, not as much, you know, marketing behind it. I mean, we saw what happened to the Wildstorm universe and then like towards the end of it actually being its own imprint and then being consolidated into the DC universe. Yeah. And then the characters, like they watered them down. Yeah. They tried to bring it back with Warren Ellis. And they try to fit away. him in, like trying to, but it just doesn't make sense. Like you try to enter, you try to fit in Grifter into the DC universe, and it just doesn't work. Yeah, it's weird. It's, but this to me is already one of my favorite superhero universes. It reminds and me it, of like when you reread like New Avengers by Bendis or Ultimate Spider-Man by Bendis, 
where it's this, these important books from a, from that specific era. Yeah. But this um, also feels kind of like there's a timelessness to it. It doesn't yeah. feel dated. Well, it's it clearly references. There's no reference to like fucking Beyonce or the president or whatever. Like, yeah. it's just, it just is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's smart. It's such a good, and it, to me, it like, as I was, as I finished it, I felt like it was almost like a spiritual successor to like a Watchmen. Mm. I think because of the way, what Alan Moore did to the superhero genre with that book, right? And then what you see Kurt Busiek doing to the soup to the superhero genre kind of still even with this because it doesn't feel like a straight superhero book it's not it's it's not your typical superhero comic right. there's superheroes in it but it doesn't feel no well because the, the point is like superhero stuff a lot of time it's the point is like some dumb excuse of a story just to punch each other with this every issue is informing the character in the world like there's an issue where it's just wonder woman and superman being forced into taking a break and going on a date yeah, and I'm talking about how they can't take breaks and how hard it is to be them, and then they get this argument about their perspectives, where she's like, you know, you you're, you're uniquely you because you're an alien trying to be human. The rest of us are human trying to love the being a god, and like it's not the same perspective, dude. Like you don't, you know. Yeah, and, and that was a really interesting issue, and it was a really interesting thing to think about, and that that's not as dumb as. A lot of the stuff that comes out with superheroes it's just an excuse to see batman do cool shit or an excuse to see superman punch something this I is know. not that at all and that's kind of like what that's like how i've been feeling a little bit about like marvel and dc that which is why i've kind of come, shaved off a little bit from my pool like reading less of that stuff because it's just not especially after reading this i think i'm like ah, fuck i don't really need it it's just the same stuff it just feels like i'm reading the same story over and over this didn't this did this felt fresh even though it's an older book yeah. and each issue didn't it it continued to propel my excitement continued to propel the world the world building is really great the characters i love the arc with jack in the box where his potential sons come back from the future i love the confessor and ultra boy story arc towards the end too I can't get over that name. Ultra Boy. Is a... <laughs> hey, even just saying it out loud. A vampire. Yeah. And then he ends up taking over that mantle. You know, like, I just think that there's just, there's so much room for this story to go in so many different weight or down different paths. And I, I just, I can't wait yeah. for, for the next volume. August can't come soon enough. I, and I can't recommend like, To me, this was, it's between like a nine and a 10 for me. Like that's that's how much I like I like the book. Yeah, no, I I love this book. But uh, I mean, that's that's all I have to to share on the book. If you have anything else you want to, yeah, say just, on it? I just wish people talked about it more. Like I'm I'm still shocked every time I was read. I finished an issue. I was just shocked. I don't understand why this isn't something that gets brought up specifically. But I think I, that I think that has to do with it not being in print. It's it's like the same thing with Ultimate. I Spider-Man. agree, but what I mean is like. Something like I fanboy, which is a bunch of people that have read this. And there's like I've never listened to a podcast where they specifically talk about specific things in the book. I've heard them just kind of gloss over, oh yeah, Astro City, but nothing specific. And I don't understand why. Um but we're changing that. So <laughs> I mean, I de- like I I'll recommend this to everybody. I, I I don't know if there's any more copies at the store, but I think this is a this should be a perennial yeah. book that is in shops because of like you said, the historical historical significance, and I mean, this stands up with anything coming out now, and it's hard for me to say that about a lot of stuff that came out in the mid nineties. Yeah, and I like this as a counterpoint to like the boys, because the boys is the construction of superheroes through a kind of tired of superhero perspective. Mm-hmm. This is the opposite. This is like a it's like a love letter. On. This is yeah, and that's the thing about Kurt Busiek stuff is that most of his stuff always feels like love letters to the thing that he's writing mm-hmm. like Secret, superman secret identity is a love letter to superman and it, it, this this continues to do that and this is just this love of superhero comics in general of like this is what they could be if they weren't just about punching each other yeah it's like he's schooling every other writer on what they yeah what i mean this is insane this is like something i would think would be taught in the classes it should be because it definitely should be on the curriculum i think for like a graphic novel class or a comic book class yeah. The writing, the everything about the book is 
it's just executed so perfectly yeah. in, in my opinion. And I yeah. definitely think that more people, hopefully us talking about it, even if it gets like one person, two, two people like talking about the book or enjoying the book, like I, I would be happy with that because I feel like I'm, I'm a little upset at all <laughs> of my retailers that I've gone to my entire comic book reading and no one pushed this and, and nobody tried to get me to read this book. Yeah, I think the publishing thing is a, is a point because I, I know I wanted to try reading this something like four or five years ago, but the last time I got printed was like 10 years ago. Yeah. So it was already hard to find the first volume and stuff. Um, and then I just gave up. I remember asking Nick, like, hey, do you know if we, how hard or easy it would be to get stuff? And he was just like, that's not really easy anymore. They have to like hunt it down on eBay. Um, so I think that I, is part of the problem. It was a great deal too, thirty bucks. Yeah, this is super cheap. Compare that to what was that Catwoman? The Catwoman went in Rome. Yeah, fifty bucks for fucking six issues, <laughs> and this is nineteen for thirty. Twenty nine, twenty nine, and, and a signed book plate. Yep. Yeah, but yeah, I def I highly, highly recommend this book. I hope that you know if you've been on the if anybody listening, watching, you've been on the fence about checking this book out. It's never been easier to get the fucking book yeah then you know pat over the pat like you said over the last 10 years it's been damn near impossible unless you ebayed it fucking great deal to check out the first 19 issues published of the series yep and uh that's all i got um if you're not already following us make sure you follow us on facebook twitter and instagram at the comic lounge like follow subscribe hit that bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid goes up and on that note we're out